Okay, as I get what I'm going to do is because it's a one to one, I'll run this one because it's the last unit as well. Um, I'll run this as a tutorial uh, to speak to you here. So it's an open discussion on what you've done. Uh, and by the end of the session, uh, you'll probably be able to um, have a good idea of if there's anything left outstanding or if you know it's going to go through at this level. Yeah. Yeah, smart principles, relevant, needs to be reasonable, realistic results based, timely, and uh, yeah, smart, whatever. Yeah, you know, you got Vaxxer in there as well, yeah, which is what I was looking for. Yeah. Um, th there's an issue there that comes up um, more than once in, in that Vaxxer. Um, it, it's the current bit. Um, what embodies have different rules on current? Um, some are as little as two years. So if you're bringing evidence for something that's more than two years old, um, then it, it's not acceptable. I have a, a, a quite an argument with this um, mm -hmm. because I don't think that, that some of the awarding bodies are, are not in a position to make that judgment. Um, the assessor is the person that can make that judgment because he knows the programme, he knows what's being assessed, he knows that part of the evidence, uh, whether it's current or not, makes no difference because you don't forget how to do certain things, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So the, the, I've had many a, a discussion, I'll put it that way, with the world in bodies with regard to that. Um, but the others, of course, it has to be valid and authentic. And it, it, sufficient is another one. And this is why um, I put on that bullet points were not, fulfilling the actual um, AC requirement. Um, it, it needs a sufficiency of evidence to be able to, to, to make that judgment, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you've got one, yeah. Reliable, uh, and that, this is, is the work consistent across all learners over time at the required level? Well, yeah, this, this applies if somebody's doing uh, a course like, I'm trying to give, give you an example. Yeah, if they're doing, say, it doesn't matter what the level is, but if they're doing um, computing or if they're doing um, a business qualification, yeah. the unit will be specific to that particular um, piece of evidence that needs to fulfill it. Yeah. Now, the, um, the other part of that is that this course has only partially academic, quite a lot of it is, is evidence that you've put together from your situation, yeah? So that means that um, every answer will be different. So that it will be consistent of a consistent standard to be reliable, yeah? But obviously different to the circumstance that the, the particular uh, trainee teacher's in, yeah? yeah? So that's just, just actually... Um, supporting what it says on there um so what's the purpose can we contribute evidence uh, to the effectiveness of course content and tutors abilities assessment is a method of measuring the extent or degree of learning which has taken place within or outside the classroom yeah because that's, that's what i say evidence is coming from uh, if you're determining this as a classroom when we're putting evidence together you're bringing evidence from an external source as well yeah, so that is learning taking place outside the classroom as well. Mm -hmm. It's to confirm that learners gain that knowledge and can prove their competencies and skills by providing the evidence and the assessments carried on through formative. And again, we, we use a formative check where you'll send me some work in and I'll make me comments on that. Um, formative assessment is really, really useful because sometimes you may look at the criteria and go off at a bit of a tangent. And if you can be corrected at that point, or if, if the learner can, can be corrected at that point and understands what the situation is, then the work that comes through after that will take that into consideration. And it usually goes, you know, it's pretty well straightforward after that. Mm -hmm. So that formative assessment with, with feedback is really important.
it also provides, obviously, for the learner to provide feedback to the assessor if there's anything they can do to improve the delivery of the course. Uh, one of the um, jobs of the course controller is to periodically, he will contact um, learners on different courses and ask for the uh, so for feedback on the, I don't know whether you've been contacted yet, but if you haven't, you will be, um, with regard to how you felt the, co the course has gone on and how you've managed with it and how the, um, the whether the tutor was um, okay or whether he needed to do something different, yeah. One of the ways <clears throat> making sure that assessments can be out is to ensure that regulatory efforts are being met. Um, it's important to understand that regulations need to be fulfilled through it. Of course, regulatory bodies such as Ofqual and Ofsted, uh, awarding organisations who accredit the work. That 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 awarding organisations is quite important because they will put down um, in an assessing situation. Quite often, um, awarding bodies will put guidelines for assessors uh, that gives the assessor. Some back, uh, some support and background in what you should make, making sure is in. Sometimes it comes in as indicative content. Other times it will be very specific. Yeah, mm -hmm. depending again on the awarding body. Some are a lot better than others. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Define key concepts. Which means the learner and the teacher are responsible for achieving what they've committed to. The issue is again towards the delivery of the course, ensuring that uh, objectives are committed from the onset. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Benchmarking is um, not always the uh, the word used for that. Um, what what usually used is standardisation, uh, and that is where the quality assurer um, will actually call the assessors together to deliver a specific course and give them some work to assess <laughs> and come up with a um, uh, a decision. And they will have then to uh, justify uh, the decision as to whether they pass. Well, it'll only be a short piece of work. It won't be a big, long one. Uh, to say whether that work is meeting the standard or whether it's not. And then be prepared to justify your, your decision. Uh, and thankfully, when I've done these before as IQA, um, they come back pretty well, pretty similar. Uh, no big Sometimes uh, one assessor may have passed it, another one may have, have, have not passed it. Uh, and in discussion afterwards, um, the work could possibly have been a bit better, but um, it was actually meeting the standards. So, you know, mm -hmm. assessors can look at the way each other um, assess uh, and take that on board. Yeah, choosing the methods of assessment is more crucial in um, sort of practical work where um, evidence can be gathered in a whole host of ways, photographic evidence, witness testimonies, uh, a whole host of things. We can look at um, mainly um, marking through, providing work and reading through it and getting, then giving feedback on it, um, but also um, you've provided um, video evidence, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, for Unit 2, and um, in, in both cases, that then fulfills the standard. Transparency and types of assessment, yeah, initial, formative, summative. Uh, that the That's what I was mentioning on there, because this is an area, um, sorry, it's quite a broad area. Um, not everybody will cover the full range of assessment uh, assessment methods, I should say. Um, a lot of assessments are done, some are done informally, uh, certainly with young children anyway. Um, mm -hmm. They will have probably a group discussion on a subject and the teacher or assessor will 
look who's involved, listen to what's being said, and make some notes, and then determine the assessment on the individuals from the notes that they've made at that informal assessment. But then it, it, I suppose it becomes formal once, once you put those notes into, into any detail. Mm -hmm. But as I said, it can, you, you, you're dead right there. They can be formal and informal, but form part of the course strategy, yeah. So it'll, and it'll be different, as I said, for, for everybody's situation. Um, somebody teaching, as I've just said, small children and others that are teaching in further education or adults will have a different way of gathering evidence, you know, to, to meet the standard. Mm -hmm. Assessors' responsibilities. It says three of them. Well, that's fairly straightforward because if you look at any system that involves learning, measuring that learning or making assessment of that learning is really the linchpin of the system. The teacher can deliver the material, but the assessor has to make a, a decision as to whether the material that's been delivered and the responses to it actually meet the standard. And this is the bit that, uh, that where assessor responsibilities can, can get quite heavy. And this is why there are a, a number of rules for um, certainly college managers or section managers to make sure that assessors don't have too many learners. Um, so they're not, they're not actually um, you know, trying to do too much and making snap decisions instead of the correct ones. So um, there are a number of areas to look at in there. Disabilities, additional ratio, adaptation may be required. It's important to understand that teaching methods and the environment may be adapted for the learner, yeah? So. Yeah, that's fine. To inform the progress and to gather the evidence of the course content and tutors' abilities, in, if they're not one and the same. This is an iterative process requires a review between the learner and the teacher. The information could be gathered by a questionnaire, general discussion, uh, teacher can adapt. I've got my English head on at the minute, just a second. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> So there are many ways to enter the course activities, but it is important to have a lesson learned. Oh, you would you not use that in academic English? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, coll it's colloquial language that we use every day, um, but as you move up in the levels, um, the academic English, English is expected by most of the um, uh, awarding bodies. I mean, yours is fine. I, I just, me, a uh, bit of a pedant when I get through things like that with, it, with teaching it as well. So, yeah, looking at some of this is a range of assessment methods. Observation. You were okay with this one. You went this one. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. That was well, well that was done, well set out. So we've not got who's going to be assessed, what will be assessed, who, what, when, 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 how. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, one of the one of the things that you find is you go as, as I mentioned before, going up the levels, um, some of the awarding bodies will will lay down specific um, requirements for certainly for practical things. I mean, the example you've given there is fine. Um, if you're going to fit a tyre, um, it needs equipment and so forth. Now, at level two, 
they would allow that to be done in college workshop, for instance. But at level three, it must be assessed in the workshop where it works uh, as a general part of the job, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it may be that fitting the tyre is only part of uh, a bigger assessment that's being done. It may be uh, a full service is taking place, which requires a change of tyre. Um, so that you, you, this is where a holistic assessment comes in, because the assessor then will look at the job and see which units have dropped out of that job. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah, as you mentioned, the video could be done. Um, as technology progresses, that the the, uh, the the use of um, phonet, phone, uh, phonic and um, video will become much more relevant. Mm -hmm. And things like um, instead of asking banks of questions. Um, a discussion with the assessor between the, the learner and the assessor as, as a, a, a professional discussion could fulfil the requirements of the standard as well. Mm -hmm. and it mentions holistic here as well. Yeah, it brings it on. The benefits. Yes. And that's the reason it saves time and costs because um, you're not just going to look at one thing you're going to look at a whole host of things that are happening uh, on that particular assessment, if it's an observation, uh, and look at what drops out of that in terms of the units and assessment criteria. Yeah. Correct. Quite often, if, the, if, if it's not a video role and the, the assessor is present, um, during the, the actual observation, the assessor can, of course, be asking questions relevant to what's actually happening. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Tiny bit small. Oh, that's a bit too small. Never mind. I can I can I can read it. Well, this is this is a theoretical view of um, the requirements when planning uh, an approach or, or an approach to an assessment. But what would, what would happen in 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 real terms? Uh, I would then look at, or or the learner would would tell me that he got a job coming in on next Wednesday, and this job would be to do this 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 and this with whatever it was, um, and then. We'd sit down and we'd plan which units that job would cover so that the, the, the learner actually knows what we're going to be doing and what I'm going to be looking at mm -hmm. before the, the actual reassessment takes place. And then it's just a matter of going in on the particular day and observing the job all the way through. We've already done that process to find out which units we cover and how much of those uh, units we've covered, whether it's all or if, it, or if that particular job doesn't cover all the criteria on, on one of the units, because that can be then picked up at, at another assessment some other time, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes um, one, of the, one of the things that... Um, Apprenticeships use is they now use um, something called a vocational related qualification, where they will do some academic work which will back up 
the, the practical work that they're actually doing in the workplace and in, or in the college workplace. Um, so that the two together will provide the total evidence for the, uh, um, for the qualification. This actually applies to um, yourself because you you've provided evidence in terms, some of it's written evidence, some of it's video evidence. As that goes on, um, if you move on to, to, to the level five, then it will require documentary evidence, um, actual evidence that you've presented. It may be initial assessment documents for a couple of learners. Um, oh, and good, because I've kept them, yeah. Yeah, so you, you are, even if you've not actually done the initial assessment yourself, yeah. uh, somebody else may have done it, but if you're going to teach that, that, uh, that class or, or, or group, um, you'll need that information because it will have all sorts of things on that initial assessment. And the, the, the individual learning plan will, will have been developed from it so that you'll know if there are issues regarding additional resources you may need for some learners or whatever. But everything will be on that. Now, if you, instead of trying to explain all what that is, if you can provide uh, a couple of initial assessments and a couple of ITPs, uh, you know, and, and you only need to talk about it, just talk your way through them on, on the written evidence um, because you've actually got a solid piece of, of practical evidence there that you can develop, yeah? Oh, okay, that's good. It, what, what it does is it, it reduces, it, it's, uh, the level five is a very big course. Um, um, it's got nine units, and they're all, you know, fairly long units. Um, and there's quite a bit of work to do, but it, it, it makes it easier. And of, of course, the the, the um, situation can be cross-referenced. Some of the evidence is asked for because you you, you pour units you've got to do, and then the other four, uh, the other five, you choose. Now, some of the evidence you've provided in those four will will then be able to be used in the others as well. Oh, okay. the, the cross reference so um it's, again that's another way of doing the assessment um you can look at what's been provided previously in a course and say yes okay well we you've covered uh, managing behaviors for instance uh, or it will say uh, in another unit it will say um <clears throat> how can i can explain it will say oh analyze theories of um, assessment yeah now in one of the units you will have done that already yeah, yeah. Um, so you really you can really just always need to read what you wrote you know and make sure it does cover the criteria um, but basically you'll be able to cross write quite a bit of that yeah okay. yeah One of the uh, say the one of the things I mentioned before was um, where it says inappropriate, inappropriate assessor. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that the assessor is not any good, but he may not be qualified to actually assess mm -hmm. that particular piece of work. And it, it has happened um, on several occasions where um, you know pe people have actually. Um, assess something and signed it off and after the, afterwards it's been found that the um, um, by the external it should have been picked up probably internally but hasn't been and then the EQA comes in and says well I can't pass that off he, he's not qualified um, and it, it, it can be awkward sometimes uh, I, I work with a, a company that had done exactly that and they hadn't realised that the this assessor was assessing somebody out in, on a building site, and it was a management. It was a, man, a level three management course, and the he had to do manage uh, an overhead lift with a crane where material was coming in on a wagon. It had to be lifted off and, and stored where it was going to be, and he had to make sure that lift was managed properly. Well, he wasn't qualified to do that, <laughs> so um, I I'd gone in to help the company because of the the quality assurance people had, had suddenly left when they knew there was an EV visit coming um, and left them in the lurch. So I'd gone in and found out there were a lot of things wrong. Um, fortunately, I said to the, um, the, when the external quality assurer came in, I, fortunately, I knew him. Um, 
<laughs> so I was able to explain what had happened. But I, I really dropped myself in it because he said, well, actually, you are qualified to do that, aren't you? I said, yes. So <laughs> he said, well, can, if you'll do a professional discussion with these two guys, um, then, you know, and write it up, um, I'll accept that as, as evidence to complete that course. Uh, so I said, yes, no problem at all. Uh-huh. And then I find out that one of them's in the centre of London and the other one's in the backwoods of Essex somewhere. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it was a bit of a task getting those completed. <clears throat> but we got them done. So, yeah, it, it, you, there are quite a lot of things have got to be clear when, when someone's assessing. Uh-huh. And, and one of the main reasons, main things is that they are qualified, not necessarily qualification. Sometimes it's experience as well. If they've got the experience to be able to do that, then that's fine. Yeah. yeah. And they've got evidence of that experience, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it, it can be that the assessor may not have the correct understanding of the course, but it, it may be it's a lack of specific skills to cover the whole of the qualification, and that's what it looks at, yeah? Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that you that bit you mentioned there about confidence is very important because um an assessor who is let me say He's really out on the job most of the time, so he may be uh, be employed by a college, um, but probably spends most of his time out in various companies um, doing the assessment process all week long. They may come in on a Monday to uh, make all their appointments to get everything set up, and then they will then probably turn up in, into college on a Friday to get all the documentation and everything you know packed away and done. Um, it's a lonely job. You're making decisions on people's futures and, and competencies, and certainly in the um, the engineering field that I was in, uh, also you've got to make sure that they have a full understanding of the health and safety issues around there, uh, and that you don't sign somebody off that is maybe competent at the work but has not got sufficient understanding of the safety aspect of what they're doing. So you, you, you've you got a lot to cover, yeah, and, it, and it, it means that you need support from time to time. Yeah, yeah numbers is a big thing. Um, there's there's <laughs> various arguments between college managements and um, the people involved, um, and it can be... You can be put in an awkward position sometimes. Um, I can remember one college I was at, um, I had a college or department manager that pulled me and another uh, quality assurer into the office to say, look, just get these signed off. And we said, well, no, they're not, they're not good enough. I'm not interested. Get them signed off. <sighs> so, uh, I mean, the, the other guy was only, he'd not been assessing long, he'd not got a lot of experience and he was like shaking in his shoes a bit. So I just said to the section manager, yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'll sign them off. But then I'll contact the awarding body and notify the external quality assurer what you've said. Is that okay? (laughs) Change his tune fairly quick. (laughs) But yes, you can be put under pressure by people as well like that. But it's one of the things that you've got to, um, as an assessor and an IQA, um, you've got to be confident in your own ability and be able to back up what you say, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Gives ownership of the learning process, can discuss any issues of the word learning styles, with the teacher opportunity to determine... Is that okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. 
because my, my sound's gone funny in just a second. Oh no, it's up. That's right, it's done. I can hear you again now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it just did it all of a sudden. I don't know why. Um, Weird, isn't it? Oh, I, I keep hearing a little ping. Yeah. It's a little juice. Yeah. The bottom line for that is, of course, that it, it's the it's it's the learners' work. It's the, they're, they're building their portfolio. It is their work, so they need to be fully involved in it. And this is why I said. If you if you do assessing practical work, you need to discuss it with the learner first to see, you know, if they're doing a particular job, you can, you've got to agree, you know, what's going to be done and and how that will be assessed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at all points when you're doing that, the the, um, the learner will have a copy of the standards that they're working towards. And this turns out to be useful as well because um, sometimes you may be accepting a witness testimony. Yeah? yeah? Now, in terms of how I was working, it would possibly be a tradesman or it could be uh, a supervisor that was signing the witness testimony. Yeah. Um, but my question then was, were they are they aware of the standards? <laughs> they may know what they have to do the job, but may not be aware of the standards. So I had to make sure that there were copies of those available to them so they could see what they were actually signing for. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Test assessment. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Don't take a scribe, yeah, that's fine, that's excellent. Judging whether the evidence is sufficient. Um, in academic work, that's usually a lot easier sometimes. Um, what, what it will say is um, it, will, it will give uh, an idea of, or it will set a, a, um, a command verb. And it will say, analyze something, for instance. Um, now, if you see six lines, you know it's not going to be sufficient. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, 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 in some ways, that's easier. If, on practical work, sometimes the awarding body will say um, that sufficient evidence must be gathered by competently completing the task at least three times or something of that nature, or it will, it will put on, but must understand that this, this, and this at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it, it, in those areas, it's not left to chance. The awarding body will, will stipulate, yeah, what you need to look at. And it helps you to judge that evidence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be um, a test of your assessment, because it may be that you watch an assessment or something, you watch a job of work, and something goes wrong. And you might have a tendency to say, he's a good lad, this, I've known him, he's done that before, it's just, just one of those things. Well, I'm sorry, no, the answer is no, it didn't occur, so it didn't pass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And as I said to you before, currency also applies to um, uh, when the evidence was developed. Yeah. Assessment criteria alone, uh, you'll get a learning objective, and the learning objective can will put an outline of what, what we're trying to achieve. The assessment criteria, each or each of the assessment criteria, will determine exactly what needs to be achieved, um, and it's by adhering to those 
um, and not going off onto anything else, just using that evidence, uh, that um, information to, to um, make sure your assessment decision, at the end of the day, does it meet that or doesn't it? Yeah. Has it achieved it or doesn't it? It may be, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. I got a, a piece of work from somebody that asked for what they did about a certain thing. Yeah. And it was all very nicely explained, but it was all in the third person. Oh. Um, so, so it was um, a teacher would do this, a teacher would do that, uh, or could do this, or could do that. Oh. And I, I just said, Luke, change it to first person and send it back. Mm. <laughs> and, oh, right, yeah, I didn't see what you meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. Yeah, 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 that's fine. This is where standardisation matters uh, to make sure that the, the decisions are fair, yeah? Um, the, because this loops at specifically um, the different assessors making assessments on the same side, the same work, same learner's work. So this is, this is why it's good to do that. Yeah, QA is important in terms of it's a second look, if you like. Yeah. But the, the quality assurer is um, an important no. It ch they changed the title. It used to be internal verifier. And they changed it to internal quality assurer. Now, quite often, I've been involved in this for a long, long time now, and they've changed the name of things. But basically, the meat in the sandwich has been exactly the same. In terms of the change to IQA, it wasn't. The IQA sits now in, in a rather strategic position in terms of making sure the assessors and looking after them, which was part of the job before. But now he liaises specifically between the awarding body and the management of the college. Um, because any changes or any standards that have to be adhered to he will have to transmit that information back to the college. They may need to provide more resources. They may need to do a whole host of things. They may need to employ more assessors. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a, um, um, a, a different job now. It's a, a, a more of a strategic management role than, than just um, looking after the quality and the, the specific assessors that are within their, under their uh, control. Yeah, conduct of professionalism um, and the way you uh, you build a reputation for um, being fair or being firm or whatever um, over the years. Um, but basically that works well because an external verifier can work with the the QA in a college mm -hmm. very well if they know where they're coming from. Um, so it, it, you need to set your own standards, yeah. Yeah, audits conducted, project reviews take place. As I said, these are used to develop the next time. Uh, yeah, regular unofficial views. And six months annual formal reviews, faction of deliveries in points. So, benchmark it makes sure. Tags are also set that add some competition. And bonuses are given to prospective trainers, teachers. Questionnaires are used to affect the trainers by the learners and give them feedback improvements. Training is given on understanding learning styles. Yeah, good. That's a fine summary. Yeah, I'll have that. That's fine. Both A, B and C are covering that. One of the one of the things that um, a lot of um, IQAs do is usually in our situation it's used electronically, um, yeah. but most of the uh, the work that goes in is encrypted, and there are only um, myself, 
And whoever that, I mean, obviously, I can't argue where this work because it, I'm assessing it. Uh, but Ramon will will um, be involved in the IQA for this. Uh, and only us, uh, only only the two are able to access this, and yourself, of course, uh, are able to access this. Yeah. And it's it's part of um, data protection as well. Yeah. Yeah, feedback. Yeah. 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 8.1, legal issues, policies, procedures relevant to assessment, including those of confidentiality, health and safety and welfare. That was an issue I mentioned earlier. If you're doing work in out in the workplace, um, one of the things that... Um, Again, sometimes college management don't understand that you need, you will need, I don't know, it could be protective clothing. You could need a hard hat. You could need a, um, um, a high vis jacket or, or yeah. toe cap boots. Um, all of which you need if you're going onto a building site. Um, plus, um, nowadays you have to have a health and safety passport, which is a, a course you have to do and complete and pass to get a card. Um, and there are different coloured cards, uh, yeah. but those without that you won't get on the site. Simple as that. Yeah. Everybody, operatives, labourers, everybody has to have one of those. Yeah. 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 That's right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we got electronically from a test. Technology can use can be courses, I encourage electronic boards, yeah, whiteboard and stuff like that, yeah. Uh, Online learning can be tailored to individuals uh, to develop the learner in their own pace. Yeah, that's true. And that's basically how we operate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fine. And the last one. Yeah. That's a, that's a point. Um, Sometimes, um, if you've got a learner that whose English is not really um, good enough to make sure that he understands all the circumstances of, of the job and the situation they're in, then, yeah, it may be that you need to have um, an interpreter there, yeah? yeah? Or even a bilingual assessor, if you've got one. Yeah. One of... One of um, Somebody that completed this course last year um, was working in um, the Emirates in, in, in the Middle East. And um, he came, after he got his qualification, he came over to the UK and got a job um, with a training provider. Uh, oh, really? And one of the things is useful is that he, he speaks, obviously, fluent Arabic and yeah. English. So um, he, he, he could be quite useful to them, I've no doubt. Yeah. Right. So looking at reflective practice, um, there are there are a number of um, reflective, um, how should I say, methods or theories um, on reflection. Um, but it's something that, that, as a teacher, you do automatically. Each session that you run, you'll think afterwards. Well, that didn't run very well. Um, there were a number of issues there that I could have looked at. Uh, other times you'll think, well, that was a really good session. Everybody seemed great and it was it went okay and blah, blah, blah. What we tend to do now today is, is we put we document it so that the, the stuff that just went on in your head to a certain extent is now recorded um, so that it, it now becomes a proper reflective process on what you've done. 
Yeah. This is added to by appraisals that are done throughout the year by observers and so forth. Yeah. But it helps you yourself to plan the next step. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do, I don't think this will move, I'm not sure. Oops, here we go. Oops, wrong way, I've gone the other way. I'll sign it up up here. I think we can say that that is now complete, yeah? Yay! <laughs> So what I will do is, um, over the next few days, I'll complete this um, assessment here, yeah, uh, and put my, you know, assessment comments in, in the boxes, and then I will send that back to you. Is that okay? Um, I think for speed on this, what I'll do is I'll put your page numbers in for you. <laughs> I've, already done, I've already done it on that one. But as I'm going through it and putting the assessment on, I'll, I'll just put the page number on at the same time. Oh, thank you. Which is, um, I don't know if you noticed that, I'd, I'd put your uh, your name in the top and the page number in the middle at the bottom. It's so that we can record that and then there's an audit trail all the way down. Yeah. 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 Have you got any, have you found the course, to be honest, while we're on? <laughs> um, it's, I found it very useful actually because it's how it actually has really been very very helpful because I've had um, I managed to get a teaching job based on this because I, I yeah. understood what they were looking for. Yeah, yeah. And then um, and I went for a job at BAE Systems uh, just yesterday. Yeah. And they were asking how I would develop my because um, uh, I've got a team of nine to manage. Yeah. And I, I used all of this. I well, couldn't believe how useful it was. <laughs> that, 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 this is what it's aimed at. It, 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 the, the, the level three is it's what they call a professional development course. It's yeah. to build up a completion of this of three units of this course at this level will yeah. allow you to allow you to go straight into the DET at level five. Yeah, yeah. That is a much bigger unit and a, a, yeah. a much bigger um, qualification, and of course. Yeah. It's, it's a level five. Now, level five stroke six is, is normally a bachelor's level, yeah? Yeah. Um, but this, the DET, once I got into it, it is certainly more than level five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, I would class it as a, as a full bachelor's because it, 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 there, is, there is a lot of work to put in on there. Uh, I've, yeah. I've, done a lot of, I've put a lot of assistance in on there, as, on the course. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, and I've changed the way it's, de it's delivered now. We start with unit mm -hmm. three instead of unit one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So there are, there are a lot of advantages of this... to moving on yeah. to it. As I've developed over, yeah. I've been delivering it for a few years now. So um, yeah. because it's a fairly new qualification, it's only two, three years old. Um, because it took in all the other ones, you know, the pitals and all those other qualifications. Yeah, it, it... I mean, I, I think as a trainer, um, and also I was thinking of teaching as well, um, yeah. it was amazing. It really gave me a focus on what how to develop people. It does. It makes you think. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Oh, well, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you enjoyed it and found it useful. <laughs> oh, gosh, you, you don't know how useful it's been because I've been unemployed since Feb. Yeah. And then in the last week, I had three job offers. Yeah, but in yeah. each of them, I was able to use like the, the theories in here and the terminology, and it just showed that I had. I mean, they basically said, "Oh, you've got a lot of emotional intelligence," and I was thinking, "How did you repeat the stuff from this course?" <laughs> I'm I'm really pleased that you found it useful because um, uh, I, I I think that quite often um, a lot of people go into teaching and. I'm not quite sure where they're coming out at the end of it. But, a lot, I mean, I think you've done extremely well, by the way. The work's come through very quickly. Um, it's been accurate. And it, it, you, any any little guidelines I've put in, you've followed. And it's worked very well. Um, so, oh, thank yes, you. No, I, I really I, enjoyed it. I'm really I mean, pleased. It really does open your eyes. It really does. I, I, um, I mean, I, I've, been, I've been teaching anyway. Um, yeah. And, that, and again, that teaching session, those are the real people. <laughs> and the adults have been training as a voluntary thing. Um, yeah. And uh, that was brilliant. It yeah. really, really helped me even with, their, with teaching them. Well, I think sometimes, 
you, you know what needs to be done, but then you get that guideline on there and it, it, it yeah. sort of reinforces what you knew and it, it gives you that bit of extra confidence then. It did, it did. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, I mean, I, I've, I've changed the way I look at things now. Yeah, yeah, that's what it does. Mm-hmm. Okay then, I think that's all for this evening. Thank and you. I think we'll close. I don't think we'll need another session. I will, as I said, I'll send you the assessment report in and I'll pick it up from there. Okay. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. So what happens after this? So, Because um, I'm on that sort of combined one where it goes on to the diploma. Yeah. So um, it'll be a, it, I'll have to join the sessions on the diploma one now. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. But, but, well, okay, um, organize that. I've got um, I've got two courses running actually, one on Thursdays and one on Tuesdays actually at the moment. I've got a group on on Tuesday, and I've got a, a single person on on no, I've got two people on on Thursday. Uh, I've got a new person just about to start as well. Um, oh, brilliant. Now, the other person has taken some time off and, and been away for a while, but she's completed a couple of units, but she's on unit three now because I hadn't changed it round then. Um, okay. So, so basically, um, the three of you will be on the same unit, so I could probably okay. set that up for Thursday nights, um, same time, 8.30. Um, like I say, it gives you that bit of time to get home, get yourself sorted out, and yeah, then you, you can sit down and do an hour. Um, yeah, they did settle down by this time, so it's much better for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it gives, sometimes if I've gone into the office, I'm only getting home for six o'clock because I, I live up in Wigan. Uh, and um, by the time I've my tea and got sorted out and done the washing up, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's apostates on my toes. I'm, I'm, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm going to get in and start. Well, obviously, I'm going to do a bit of prep as to, to you know, what we're going to be doing. Yeah. Okay, then. Anyway, yeah, that will, good. Thank you. Close that for this evening and say, okay. uh, that's what about you. And uh, hope we go on oh. from here. Oh, Bye for now. <laughs> All right, excellent. Catch you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Same to you.